Step into the time machine of wonder as we take you on a prehistoric adventure like no other. Get ready to witness the Earth's past come alive, where mighty beasts ruled the land, and incredible marvels awaited at every turn. Today, we embark on an expedition through the Cretaceous period, an era of jaw-dropping revelations and awe-inspiring mysteries. Buckle up, fellow explorers, as we embark on an epic journey to a world that time forgot. Before we dive into the wonders of the Cretaceous, let's take a moment to understand when this incredible period occurred. The Cretaceous lasted nearly 80 million years, starting 145 million years ago and ending 66 million years ago. It was the last period of the Mesozoic era, coming after the Jurassic period and before the current Cenozoic era. Our planet's continents were once joined together into one supercontinent called Pangaea, but during the Cretaceous, the continents began to break apart, moving into positions similar to what we see today. The climate back then was far warmer than it is today, and there was little to no ice at the North and South Poles. Sea levels fluctuated, and at times they were as high as 170 meters higher than today. Shallow seas formed, dividing some continents, like the Western Interior Seaway, which split North America into two landmasses. Now let's explore the fascinating flora of the Cretaceous. Ancient temperate rainforests grew close to the poles, which were ice-free at that time. Fossil evidence reveals polar forests dominated by conifers, ferns, and cycads. Dr. Paul Kenrick, a prehistoric plant expert, explains, we have evidence from West Antarctica of polar forests that would have been dominated mainly by conifers, things like podocarps, araucarias, and probably ginkgo trees as well, with understories of ferns and cycads. Interestingly, flowering plants known as angiosperms were not as prominent at the start of the Cretaceous, but became a significant part of the planet's plant life by its end. Dr. Paul Kenrick adds, in flowering plants today, something like 70% are insect pollinated. Insect pollination happens earlier on in the Jurassic with gymnosperms, a group of seed producing plants, but it becomes much bigger with the flowering plants. So there is this big evolutionary story going on between plants and animals. In the Cretaceous, dinosaurs reigned supreme. These magnificent creatures were the true rulers of the land. Dinosaurs were everywhere, and they came in all shapes and sizes. In fact, everything larger than a meter on land was a dinosaur. Alongside the dinosaurs, birds had evolved and filled the skies, while marine reptiles like mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, and ichthyosaurs ruled the oceans. The Cretaceous period witnessed a remarkable turnover in dinosaur species over its 80 million years. While famous dinosaurs like T. rex and Triceratops lived at the end of the period, there were other majestic beings like Diplodocus and Stegosaurus during the Jurassic. Dr. Susie Maidment, a renowned paleontologist, explains, the Cretaceous is 80 million years long, so there's a lot of turnover in that time. The Jurassic, which ended 145 million years ago, was the time when we have really big dinosaurs in the Northern Hemisphere, things like Diplodocus and Stegosaurus. Those seem to go extinct or at least decline in the early Cretaceous, and they're replaced by Iguanodontians and Ceratopsids. As the Cretaceous progressed, different groups of dinosaurs, such as Iguanodontians and Ceratopsids, took center stage. For example, in the early Cretaceous, Iguanodontians were some of the first dinosaurs to evolve complex chewing mechanisms, rather than just gulping down food like other reptiles. In the late Cretaceous, hadrosaurs, the duck-billed dinosaurs, did similar, using their hundreds of tiny teeth to grind up vast amounts of plant matter. Dr. Susie Maidment humorously calls them the cows of the Cretaceous. Some of the most awe-inspiring creatures of the Cretaceous were the sauropods, Giants like Patagotitan, stretching over 37 meters in length, were among the largest land animals ever to walk the earth. But what led to their incredible size? Dr. Susie Maidment suggests it could be related to the gases in the atmosphere, or an evolutionary arms race between prey and predators. She explains, big dinosaurs couldn't really run, so they had to protect themselves in other ways. So the prey animals got bigger, and then the predators got bigger, and so on. As we explore the Cretaceous, we discover that plants might have played a crucial role in shaping the environment. For instance, herbivorous dinosaurs, like sauropods, might have been ecosystem engineers, changing their habitat through their behavior. Dr. Paul Kenrick explains how the presence of large herbivores may have influenced plant adaptations, leading to chemical defenses and robust structures to deter dinosaurs from consuming them. Towards the end of the Cretaceous, Earth witnessed one of the most infamous mass extinction events, the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction. 
Approximately 66 million years ago, a massive asteroid impact off the coast of Mexico drastically changed the climate, causing acid rain, ash clouds, and a collapse of the food chain. Many species, including the dinosaurs, were wiped out, but remarkably, plants showed great resilience, demonstrating their remarkable ability to survive and adapt in the face of catastrophe. Our journey through the Cretaceous has been a fascinating one, revealing the splendors and complexities of Earth's forgotten world. As we leave this ancient era behind, we continue to uncover the remarkable stories of our planet's history. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to join us on more exhilarating adventures through time and space. Until next time, fellow adventurers, stay curious.